So in communication, um, there's this, uh, let's say, very simple technique that we use. And we have already alluded to some to this that has to do with politeness and with the way the speech flows, uh, small talk, and then there's also apologize, apologizing and complimenting. These are indispensable uh, parts of a healthy conversation, let's put it that way. Can you skip these? Yes. You don't have to use these things that I'm talking about at all. But the truth is, if you do, your speech will be more effective. And if you do, and you do it wisely, you will get further in your attempts of communicating with people around you, okay? So, so these are features that help us get better, essentially. Um, so the idea of you know, small talk, small talk is just you know, basic conversation. What, what do you do in small talk? Uh, you, you just strike up a conversation. You talk about something non-controversial, essentially. But the authors present us a few suggestions here on um, how you know people should communicate uh, better rather than just communicate. Because you can be thoughtless in your communication and just do what you do and not worry about it. Or you can hone your skills of communication and become better. Uh, so one of the uh, suggestions uh, suggestions that they uh, give is avoid finishing uh, another sentences. Have you guys ever had somebody in a conversation, as you were saying a sentence, they picked it up and they finished it for you? Have you ever had that happen? Anyone? Nobody? Nobody had this in our conversation where you're saying something and your friend jumps in and they finish your sentence. Now, this happens usually with close friends, people who kind of know what they're talking about and things like that. It doesn't really happen with a stranger or somebody who's not, you're not close to, but a lot of times people have finished my sentences, many times. Um, and that's, you know, could be very distracting, <laughs> could be very hard, so. Um, uh, that's something you want to avoid. It's never, uh, it's okay because I'm glad another person is tracking with me, but you have to allow another person to finish what they're saying. Um, asking for clarification, we already talked about that. The idea of confirming something a person said, if it's needed, it's, it's very, very helpful. Um, uh, another suggestion is don't treat people who have language problems like children. That's, that's, uh, we've talked about that as well. Uh, sometimes people, their English is not perfect. And so, because it's not perfect, you start treating them as if they're not smart enough. Which, that's not the case. The case is they're just as smart as you are, maybe even smarter. The only difference is they're struggling with language. So, it doesn't make them dumber. You don't have to come down and talk to them like you're talking to five-year-olds. Which is what sometimes people do uh, with foreigners. So, if you don't speak perfect English, all of a sudden, people start talking down to you as if you're a little kid or something like that. So, it's a very negative uh, feature. Uh, that's sometimes is culturally expressed. So, a um, uh, person who stutters. I don't know if you ever had a chance for, to talk to people who stutter, people who are slow thinkers. Some people just take time to think, to express their thoughts. Um, yeah, that's, that's another you know, aspect to be mindful of. Some people are sl simply slower in expressing themselves. Um, and then letting uh, another person know if you have any sort of a, you know, special uh, considerations or, or needs. Sometimes uh, when I'm working through a problem, you know, I have a hard time working it out. And I may ask people to say, okay, hang with me. This is not something I have finished thinking about. I'm still kind of trying to figure this out. So let me give you what I have so far. But don't interrupt me because I'm trying to work through this difficult problem in my head. So let me get it out, basically. And you know, sometimes I would do that, you know. So letting other people know what to expect, sort of say, as you're speaking is helpful. See, these are good um, suggestions for everyday conversation. Uh, now, small talk. Getting back to that idea. Um, small talk is something you say to a person when you just meet them casually. Um, Besides hello, um, usually non-controversial topics, usually a short remark, you know, 
Uh, a lot of times I begin my class with small talk, if you noticed. What is my small talk every time in class? How are you guys doing? How are other classes going? What's going on? Now, and I'm generally concerned because I actually do want to hear from you, except you never tell me, how, except everything is fine, everything is good. <laughs> you know? But that is my small talk. If you notice, I begin every single class that way. I always ask how you're doing, how things are happening, you know, what's going on in your other classes, you know, are you stressed out about something in particular, is there something going on this week that I should know about, things like that. And, and so it's a small talk, it's not necessary. I can just launch into my class, I don't need to say any of that. But it breaks that silence and it allows me to transition from just saying hello right into a material of a class. So that's what small talk is. Sometimes it's something non-controversial. You could say people, you can talk about weather, you could talk about sports, you could say, you know, little things in life that did you have noticed that essentially not gonna create a problem, but allow you to segue into a conversation with a person, all right? It's a segue, it's a platform for transition. That's what small talk is. Uh, and it doesn't have to be long, and it doesn't have to be super meaningful. Uh, it can be something very, very simple. But that is an effective way of moving a conversation into a direction or progressing it. So uh, what, are the, what are some of the guidelines for small talk? Well, very simple, be positive. Don't use a negative small talk. Don't say something negative in a small talk because then it stops being small talk, it becomes big talk, right? <laughs> You say something negative, you get people upset, they're going to start arguing with you, or, or you want to start a conversation in a positive direction rather than a negative direction. Starting a conversation in a negative way almost always ends up bad. It ends up in a greater rate of success. If you're wanting to have success in conversation with people, then, then be positive. Start positive at least. You may end negative, but you at least start positive. Uh, be sensitive uh, to leave uh, some taking cues so like basically if you're doing small talk pay attention to whether other person wants to say something or jump in let them have a turn don't just monologue is basically that's what it's saying um, stress um, similarities rather than differences so that means uh, commiserate that means um, find common ground with people in small talk talk about something you can uh, identify with or connect with them on not something that you're interested in and they're not let's put it that way that's what we're talking about similarities uh, answer questions with enough elaboration to give the other person information to use interact with you so don't just be quiet in small talk if somebody says something to you you know hey did you see that game you know last week or did you see that game yesterday wasn't that amazing you know, if somebody asks me that, and I have friends, you know, from time to time who ask me things about sporting games, if they're really good friends that they know I don't really care because I'm not a sports fan, right? But if they don't know me very well, let's say they're a colleague at work and they don't know this about me, they'll ask me something about some sports game that was on TV and I would usually say, no, I didn't see it, you know, <laughs> because I want to be polite. Not because, you know, in reality, I could say, you know what, I don't care. I don't like sports, I don't watch sports games, you know. But that would be like cutting me off. That would be negative, right? So what do I do? Say, no, I didn't see it. So I'm still being polite by saying, your interest in sports is legitimate, and I'm glad that you're interested in, for, in sports, but I missed it. Or I can't really talk to you about it because I didn't see it, I didn't know it. So I am being positive in this situation worth of Versus just saying, you know what, I hate sports, I don't care about them. Because <laughs> that would be like, boom, cutting off that small talk, right? I want to keep the small talk going, essentially, and by being polite and positive. So, uh, but, but I'm not going to go into that situation and give them all this information about me, me not caring about sports that much. Why? Because that will end our, our small talk. I would say, if a person say, hey, did you see that game yesterday? You know, wasn't it exciting? And I'll say, you know what, I missed it. What game were you talking about? What happened? And then that person will have an opportunity to tell me about what they're so excited about what happened, right? So what does that do? I'm inviting them into a conversation and I'm creating a positive environment to let them share about what they thought was really amazing and wonderful. You know, whether I care about it or not, it's not even important. That person cares about them. So that's, that's the idea. So, Avoiding a monologue is important, so when you're doing small talk, 
it has to be back and forth, back and forth, otherwise it's not small talk anymore. And remember that you will be associated with topics that you frequently uh, select, uh, select to talk about. So uh, basically watch, watch the topics, <laughs> that's, that's what they're saying. Um, if you talk about sports all the time, if every time you make small talk and you talk about sports, guess what people are going to remember about you? You like sports. That's what they're going to think about you. If you talk about politics every single time, guess what people are going to think about you? That person is really into politics. It, whatever, however you start your small talk, whatever you do with your conversations, the topics you bring up will define you for other people. That may not be who you are, but they will define you as that type of a person. So people will know you through those little tiny conversations when you bump into them in the elevator or something like that. So, so be mindful of that. Uh, select your topics appropriately, let's put it that way. That's what I mean. All right, That's, uh, the, those are suggestions. Now, uh, besides small talk, there's this idea of apologies. Uh, apologies are pe when people express their sorrow, their regret over something. Uh, something happened, it didn't happen right, they, they are expressing their regret that it happened. They may be even confessing some of their guilt too, so there's nothing wrong. I think apologies are very important. I think many people do not know how to apologize. Let me put it this way. I actually believe many people do not know how to apologize, at least here in a Western culture that I've experienced a lot, not being a Westerner myself. I do believe that there's lots of people who do not know how to say I'm sorry. In fact, they say I'm sorry, but they do it in a very wrong way, which turns the I'm sorry into I'm not sorry. <laughs> this is what I mean. An apology needs to be real. It needs to be genuine. So here are recommendations that the authors of this textbook give us for apologizing, and they're very, very good, uh, you know, recommendations. Number one, admit wrongdoing. If you're apologizing for something, say, I was wrong. Say it. You know, most of the time people will say, I'm sorry, but they'll never actually say, I was wrong. They can't admit they're wrong. In their world, they're never wrong. They're apologizing, sorry I hurt your feelings, but they still think I was right. <laughs> See what I mean? Saying I was wrong, a lot of people can't say it because their personal pride would not allow them to admit that they could be wrong. Their view of themselves sometimes is a bit too inflated. So, be apologetic. Uh, and that means actually do say what you're sorry for, what you have, you know, done wrong. Uh, and that's... That's an important feature there. So be specific. Uh, say what it is that you did wrong. Don't just say, I'm sorry for whatever I did. Say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I did not listen to you when you said this and this and this. Or I disregarded your opinion on this matter. That was really rude of me. Admit your guilt. Uh, and be very specific. What are you apologizing for? Because don't apologize in generalities. Don't just say, I'm sorry for whatever. You know? Because that's actually not apology. That's just a cop out. That's just a way to make the other person shut up. That's just to make uh, a way to make the other person think you're sorry, where you're really not. Because if you don't know what you're apologizing for, then you're not really apologizing. See what I mean? And you also can't change that behavior. So your apology is empty because you're about to do that again. Whatever you did wrong, you're going to do again and again and again and again because you don't even know what you did wrong or you're not willing to admit what you did wrong. So, and so you have to uh, sometimes you know, emphasize uh, what you are apologizing for. Be very, very clear about it and give assurance that this is not going to happen again. This is another good way of apologizing. Now don't just, a lot of people, times people say, this is not gonna happen, okay? But they don't mean it. They say it, they don't mean it. So a lot of times, uh, I, my suggestion, my personal suggestion for people is to do something 
to show that it's not gonna happen. I, I, or in other words, um, do some sort of a corrective action. If you're saying you're sorry, okay, saying I'm sorry doesn't really do it. I'm gonna say I'm sorry and I'm gonna take a step towards changing this. I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna do it. I'm actually going reverse doing what I've done. So what am I sorry for? Let's say I'm sorry for ignoring your advice on something. Let's say we're roommates, you told me don't do this, I hate when you do this, I ignored you, I did whatever I wanted, now we have a disaster in the middle of the living room and you know, I'm sorry that I created that disaster. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fix it. I'm actually gonna do an action. And next time, I'm gonna say, you know what? I really wanna know what you think about this. How can we fix it? Let's work on this together. I've ignored you first time. First time, I didn't act as a friend. I ignored your advice. I said, I know better. I don't need your opinion. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. This time, I'm not gonna ignore your advice. This time, I want to hear what you have to say and I want you to be a part of the process. So I'm gonna fix it, but you're gonna tell me how to fix it. You're gonna give me input on how to correct whatever mess I've made, you know? And that, that is the opposite of what happened the first time. First time I did not respect you enough to listen to you. Right now, I am respecting you by listening to you and I'm actually gonna do what you tell me. And that's a way to show that I'm sorry rather than just say that I'm sorry. So, uh, giving people assurances that just simply uh, I'm not going to do this again is empty unless you're actually reversing your course of action and actually undoing what you did. Okay. And that's what I'm suggesting. And that's a very powerful apology is what I'm saying. And apologies are very good. Why? Because they, they do amend relationships that need to be mended. Otherwise those relationships can be irreparably broken. Avoid excuses. That's a great advice. <laughs> a lot of times people say, uh, I'm sorry, this and this and this happened, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll say, but I was in a tough place or this and this happened. Uh, and they start giving excuses of why they did what they did or explain why this went down this way versus the other way. No excuses. When you're apologizing, excuses cannot be a part of it. You can't say, I'm sorry I did this to you, but I did this because I had no choice or something like that. I'm like, that's not an apology. That means next time when you feel like you have no choice, you're going to do this to me again. So no excuses. I did this. I'm wrong, period. Not I did this. I'm wrong. Only I had another circumstance that made it right for me. So I did it. <laughs> Don't use excuses. Excuses are really, really pitiful uh, when it comes to apologies. And this is a very valuable skill, by the way, uh, as you communicate with people. Um, powerful apology will mend a relationship that's about to be destroyed sometimes or broken. Uh, a relationship that needs to be repaired. Maybe you did something terrible at work and you messed up and your boss is about to fire you. You do a right apology and you apologize the right way, guess what, you might just keep your job. Otherwise, you're out. You know, things like that can, can save a lot. So, and then choose an appropriate channel to apologize. And what it means here is that sometimes the easy way to apologize is to write a person an email or, or letter or something like that, not directly. And that may be appropriate in some situations. In some situations, maybe the best way to apologize is to write an email, okay? But more effective is face-to-face. -face. It's very difficult to not forgive a person who is standing in front of you, looking you in the face and saying, I'm sorry I did this, I was wrong. There is no excuse for what I've done. I've messed up, would you please forgive me? It's very difficult for people to say, you know, no, I will not forgive you, <laughs> we're done. You know? When that happens face to face, a lot of times a relationship can be repaired. You know what's very easy to do? Go into your email and go delete. That's very easy to do. That apology is very easy to dismiss. Now, it's the easiest for you to do because you don't have to find courage and stand in front of the person and look them in the eye. Just shoot an email, you know. But it's not as effective as what I'm trying to say. So you have to choose the channel, appropriate channel. Sometimes, a letter of apology might be fine. Another times, a face-to-face -face apology may be better. Okay, things like that.
Sometimes a public apology. If a person was publicly humiliated by something you did, the only way to appropriately apologize is publicly. Because if you humiliated somebody publicly, you need to return that person to a condition of dignity publicly as well. That's the only way to do it. To humiliate someone publicly and then to apologize privately doesn't actually do anything. That's what I'm trying to say. So you, hopefully you guys get the idea. So apologies are necessary because they do happen. Um, relationships do break down uh, and, and it's something that we have to do from time to time. Now, uh, compliments is the flip side of apology, okay? Uh, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I messed up and things like that, sometimes we simply need to compliment a person in a conversation and, and express some sort of uh, congratulations or, I don't know, flattery may not be the best word. Flattery to me, flattery is a very negative connotation as the word, but uh, words of praise uh, or recognition. So what is a compliment? Compliment is recognizing something that a person has, some sort of a dignity or a quality that's positive, and it's recognizing it sometimes vocally and publicly, um, uh, or at least acknowledging it out loud in some way, shape, or form, bringing it to, uh, to the forefront of a conversation. So how do you give a compliment? Believe it or not, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to give a compliment. You can't compliment people the wrong way. And it will be taken badly, believe me. <laughs> that will happen. So first of all is be real and honest. Don't be disingenuous. If you compliment somebody and you are lying through your teeth, people will know it. People will see when your compliment is not genuine. That means you have to pick appropriate words. You can't just say, you can't just pick the best platitude that's out there possibly and pull it out and, and use it on purpose. You have to be realistic. Realistic compliments versus unrealistic compliments. Compliment in moderation. That means if you compliment somebody too much, they're going to say, that's not real, that's not genuine. Uh, you're, you're trying to make me feel better than what things really are. You're taking me outside of reality and into a fantasy land. And I don't want to live in a fantasy land. So I'm glad that you see me in a positive light, but don't tell me I am the you know, most handsome person in the whole world because I'm not. I know that, that's okay. You know? But if you do find me attractive, that's okay. You could say you look good today. You could say that tie looks awesome you know, or something like that. And that's not saying that you're the most handsome person and you should be on the cover of a magazine or something like that. Be realistic in your compliments. Don't overdo it. Don't compliment too much. If you compliment every single, if you, every single time you see a person, you compliment them on something, that can be too much. You have, you have to balance it out. You can't possibly meet a person every time and every time you meet them, you have to say a compliment. That's not how it works. You can overdo it. Um, avoid, avoid qualifiers. For example, uh, when you make a compliment to a person, you could say, you know, that paper you wrote was really an excellent paper, except all the spelling mistakes you made. <laughs> Something like that. See what I just did? I qualified it. I said, what you did was great, except that. You know, you look great today, except that hat you're wearing is hideous. <laughs> or Something like that. I qualified it. You know, so sometimes we say a compliment, but then we take away part of it by noticing something negative about a person or noting something that, that changes the compliment. So also be specific in compliment. When you compliment somebody on something, be, you know, be as precise as you can be. Compliment a particular quality of a person or if it's a look, it's a look. Um, and be personal in your own feelings. You can say, this is how I feel. This is how I think. This is what it looks like to me. So if you make it personal, that doesn't make it universal. That's again, makes it real. Because if you say, you know, you're the most, you know, handsome looking guy in the whole world or something like that, that makes it so global, so big. Now I have to compete with the whole world, right? Or you could say, you know what? You look, you look really nice today. 
see that's or you know I really like this or like by putting yourself into a situation by making it a little bit smaller a little bit more personal you actually make it a compliment more realistic so you can you can overdo it with compliments compliments are powerful and they're they're great but you can definitely go uh, too far uh, accepting a compliment is another art uh, you can't just you know hear a compliment and not not react you know so how do you react by when somebody compliments you well there's several ways uh, here's the three ways that the authors of this textbook suggest a person should accept a compliment one is just smile eye contact you know somebody compliments you just smile you know or you can alternatively say thank you or you can smile and say thank you all right uh, and then offer a reflection uh, you know very briefly uh, of you know I appreciate you noticing that or something like that something like that you know uh, from time to time somebody might compliment you on your way to look oh I really like your jacket or something like that you're wearing and you say thanks you know this is one of my favorite ones or something like that and then you can offer a reflection and that's a way of saying, I heard your compliment and I appreciate it. You see what I'm saying? Rather than just ignoring it by looking away or, or going on about how great you really are. <laughs> like that. That's another, there are inappropriate ways of reacting to a compliment and there's more polite, cordial, appropriate ways of doing it. So, all right, so we're towards the end of the chapter. Let's summarize. Um, what we've had here. Um, interpersonal communication is communication between two or more people who have a relationship and who are exchanging some sort of a message, right? That's what we're talking about. Now, uh, there is a continuum of interpersonal communication which ranges from impersonal to personal or highly personal. Communication between you and a person who brings you food in a restaurant is fairly impersonal, right? Communication between you and your friend or a roommate or, or a parent, uh, you and a parent, is very, very personal. So the degrees are going to change. And so that, that's what we mean by a continuum in your interpersonal communication. Um, there are five stages. Um, we have the opening, the feed forward, the business, the feedback, and the closing. We talked about that, the five simple stages of communication. Um, cooperation as a principle is one of the key principles that needs to happen in order for people to actually understand each other and in order for communication to flow uh, freely back and forth. Uh, there are rules of politeness in the conversation with that which we have reviewed and, um, and there are uh, certain cues that you can use in turn takings. So that means you can let another person have a turn, let them know that it's time for them to take a turn, offer them an opportunity, or you can withhold uh, that opportunity of a turn in case you feel like it's uh, necessary for you to continue on. So taking turns and yielding turns is another act of important skill uh, in interpersonal communication. Now, dialogue versus monologue, we talked about that. That's important to keep in mind. So a real conversation, a real interpersonal communication is a dialogue that flows both ways. Monologue is the opposite. It's just where one person speaks, another listens, which is not as helpful. Um, it's not as dynamic. It does not achieve as much. And immediacy is another aspect that we talked about. That's that being close, being emotionally connected, being in the same place, time, space, sort of say, and having that unity uh, between the listener and the speaker or two parties in a dialogue where both of them are actually listeners and speakers. And then small talk, where you simply have to break the ice and sometimes get the conversation rolling. Uh, apologies, we talked about that. Uh, how important that can be in a reparation of a relationship that might have been damaged by a conflict of some sort or disagreement of some sort, hurt feelings, whatever that may be, and the compliment that really takes you a long way. This is the social glue of interpersonal conversation. People should give each other compliments, they should apologize when they need to, and they should segue into their conversations with small talk or some sort of transitions because that's how a skillful communicator does it essentially 
And so if you watch for those, you will notice that that is how people who are really good at communicating actually do it.